Hey everyone, welcome to this little video about Yoda, um, which has hit Bitfinex Exchange today. And there are quite some uh, rumors out there about the project itself and some doubts and can I trust them, is it scammy and so on. So I thought I'd make a little um, overview video about the currency, about the coins and so on as such. So um, whenever, of course, you want to have more information on that, you can find this in the internet, especially on Slack, on Telegram, or also on the homepages about Yoda and their white paper. So um, I thought it might make sense to give a very brief introduction to the project itself and then to explain a couple of things um, to you who might doubt right now. Okay, first of all, um, Yoda is brand new to the market right now. Actually, it has been in development since uh, 2015. And the core features of Yoda, opposed to Bitcoin and all the other blockchain technologies out there, is first of all that it's very fast, as opposed to Bitcoin, which can handle only five to 10 transactions per second. Yoda can handle up to 1,000 transactions per second, and it might grow even to more than that in the future, but that would suffice for the targeted um, Internet of Things applications and applications uh, as such. So this is really important for microtransactions. Think about Bitcoin payments, um, how long they take right now. So with Yoda, this will be a lot faster. And of course, machine to machine payments need to be really fast. So um, this is also a necessity for it to succeed. And it's working already now. Second feature is that it's scalable. You know, the big discussion about Bitcoin at the moment um, with Yoda, uh, this, the solution to it is built in. So the whole thing was built from scratch and um, it's got its own and a very new way of dealing with the Bitcoin problems. Essentially, you can say that the more uses there are, the faster it gets. So obviously this will be seen in the coming weeks now that it's um, available for everyone. But I think uh, looking at the tests which they have had so far, um, Yoda has already proven that it can handle and is capable of really um, delivering also the scalability which everybody is hoping for. And the third point is of course that it's free. We don't have any fees for transaction in Yoda. Um, is, this is especially important for machine to machine payments because you need, don't need extra calculations for an extra fee and just pay more because you have to pay the fee and so on. But at the end of the day it's free and it's also nice of course, to send money all around the globe without um, paying an extra fee. Um, right, so this is just a brief overview, overview as I said. Um, I want to address now some questions which people out there had about um, IOTA as such. First question, why are there so many coins, so many tokens out there? That's a fair question. Um, first thing I want to say is that it these uh, tokens have not been uh, or, or no part, no um, portion of these tokens has been kept by the developers as kind of pre-mined tokens. Uh, what they did was to take all of the bitcoins they got for the ICO and kept this for the development, which, as I said, has been going on for uh, one and actually two years right now. Um, so what they did was to keep those bitcoins and uh, to to give the other coins to the people. So all of the tokens have been distributed to the people. That's the first thing. Now, the question was, why so many tokens? It's actually a very compl uh, complex answer. Why exactly this amount of tokens? Um, the easy answer is that with machine-to-machine -machine payments, um, you have real microtransactions, which means very, very tiny um, payments. So with these tokens, as we have them right now, you don't need any floating point calculations, no complicated things around it, but just usual normal numbers starting from one and ending at this very large number, which I can't pronounce even. 
So um, this actually has its reason uh, with the machine-to-machine -machine payment. If you want to dig deeper into that, I would advise you to read the white paper and also to ask the developers on Slack. They will certainly explain this to you in more detail than I ever could. Um, just a brief remark here. Um, the price at coin market cap is uh, pegged to the mega yota price. So um, keep this in mind when you see the price. This is the mega yota price, not the price for one single yota. Some people were also a bit confused about this as well. Okay, second question. Why should I trust these people, this project? Um, first of all, I like that to say that these are no unknown people behind it. Um, of course, one of the core developers come from beyond is very well known to the persons coming from next. Um, he has also said that he is the inventor of the proof-of-stake system, which next was uh, the pioneer, um, pioneer of. Then there is David, the, the leader of the whole project. If you dig into what he has done already, you will easily see that he's a very um, fine man with very um, sophisticated ideas and so on. Um, and there is Dominic Sheena, who is, yeah, who's had lots of projects already. He was also involved in the next, um, uh, the next project, but also several other projects, setting up gateways, Euro, Fiat gateways, and so on. Um, just dig a bit deeper into their um, CVs, and you will easily see that these are very um, capable persons. And of course, there's the Yota Foundation, um, with very... Uh, with a large pool of renowned supporters of the project um, coming from different business areas which range from medicine or the health system to physics and electricity and I don't know what. So there is really capable persons and also renowned persons as I said. So again just have a look at those persons um, at the homepage. Moreover Apparently, you haven't heard about Yota that much so far. That's another argument for me, because many people out there don't know Yota, even though it has been in development for actually two years now, which t shows me that the people there stick to their promise to not produce hype and fuss and I don't know what around it. There was no nothing... Uh, since 2015, except for the promises and that they will deliver what they promised back then, which they have right now. They focused on the project and technology and they have come up with partnerships, as I will tell you in the end. Um, okay, next question. If it's so fast, why were there so many problems with the Bitfinex launch today? Um, the answer is fairly easy. Yes, the scalability is there. It's a very fast network, but all this doesn't help if Bitfinex doesn't come up with um, a solution on their side to handle all of this because there were so many people wanting to buy coins or to sell them or whatever. So um, it was a problem on Bitfinex side as they have admitted also, uh, which didn't have anything to do with the protocol. So don't worry about that. Some people kept asking next question about an ugly wallet. It's not very posh and uh, you know, nice to look at, admittedly, but it's lightweight and it's functional and this is all um, what it's about. It is a bit different in handling. You have to generate uh, addresses, you have to attach them to the tangle, um, but once you get the thing going, it really isn't that difficult. Just generate the address and you can use them a couple of times. Um, the only thing which you have to keep in mind the moment you send transaction from this address you cannot use it anymore. Um, but this is also something you will easily find in the white paper and also in the Slack channel if you have any questions just ask them. Some people, people kept saying that it's so complicated to use the wallet. Um, I would advise you use the light wallet there are also tutorials on setting up a full node, but for most of the users, the wa uh, light wallet should be fine. And since this complex architecture of the network is such, um, it is important 
to have some uh, kind of set or a pool of servers which you can connect to if one of them you know goes down or isn't available at this very moment you need it um, the, the people have come up with a very good solution from the Yota support so I will just um, add the link to the video and you can use this address and it will automatically correct uh, connect you to um, the the working servers out there and it shouldn't be a problem anymore to get connected to the network. Um, then there was a question about the coordinator. There is this kind of centralized thing which at the moment keeps the network running in order to you know manage all the nodes and so on. So people are asking is it really decentralized or is it not centralized at the end of the day? Which is a very fair question. Um, as I said, you need this coordinator at the moment to get the thing going. But all of the developers have already said that once this is not needed anymore, it will be shut down. So it will be a truly decentralized network. It just needs the coordinator at the moment to get it going. Of course, there are not so many people out there who, who will support the network um, as the network actually needs. So there must be a coordinator to keep it going. Um, but as I said, it will be decentralized probably and most likely this summer in 2017. Good. I hope this helps you with some of your concerns about Yota. Now I just wanted to say some things about the partnerships which uh, exist already. First and foremost there is Canonical which is the company behind Ubuntu, this Linux distribution. Um, with Canonical telecom focused applications will be in the focus. There was already a use case at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona in 2017 um, which had to do with billing, new ways of uh, telecom billing. So just have a look at this one if you're interested in that. This is already um, working. Now another big partner is Energy with uh, Carsten Stöcker, the leader of the Energy Innovation Hub, um, who's also part of the Yota Foundation. And they are very much into data-driven business models, especially in energy management, but also um, supply chain management, mobility, logistics, telematics, healthcare telematics, environmental observation, security, telecommunication networks. This is really a big network and Yoda is in the midst of it and they are using it right now. There is scientists, there is um, developers and so on working on it and they are really working together and there will be projects shown in the near future also about that. Um, it's Yoda is on Microsoft Azure. It um, has a cooperation with the University of Lancaster, who are um, working on an electronic voting system, or rather setting this up with uh, Yoda as the ledger behind it. Um, there is the cooperation for DIF, the Decentralized Identity Found uh, Foundation with partners such as Microsoft and Accenture and so on. So really big companies also here. And of course, this network is really important to you know, promote these ideas to the, to the real big companies. And there is also cooperation with Rootstock, which I think will soon um, be showcased. Um, Rootstock company who wants to make Bitcoin smarter and Yota can be used also there. Another partner which has um, announced the cooperation only some days ago was Outlier Ventures, which is basically a venture capital, um, you know, not firm, but group in a way. And they have searched a very long time where to put the real money in. And they have looked at hundreds of uh, you know, projects and things you could use. And in the end, they came up with Yota because they said this is the technology of the future. Um, so in the end, there is a seven digit venture capital coming also in from there. And something which is not official, but if you, you know, have a look at some Twitter accounts and so on, um, there is something going on with Cisco and Foxconn. So maybe you also want to have a look at this one. I think we will hear more about this in 
June or July. Yeah. So overall, um, I can only say Yoda is a really nice project. Um, it has friendly developers and a friendly community. They kept their word to focus on the project as such. There is no, or there, there hasn't been hyping of any way. They really also didn't uh, leak any information before the uh, listing on the exchange. And they are very focused on projects, linking up with the right persons. They have a clear vision of what they actually want to achieve. Um, and they're really working on this. And yet you have to say they are still at the beginning. I mean, now there is the exchange listing, of course, but this is actually where it gets going. And I'm really looking forward to the future of this. Um, crypto is always speculative and it's always kind of risky, but Yota is as safe and as professional as it can be. So I really hope um, you will dig deeper into that and hope also that this video has helped you in a way. So appreciate some likes for the videos. And apart from that, I wish you happy trading. Thank you very much. Bye.